Hello and welcome to Ben's Addiction. Today we are going to talk about the clutchless AC compressor for Mercedes-Benz and how it operates using the solenoid. I'm also going to show you how to diagnose different components of the AC system and how to replace the control valve solenoid on your AC compressor. We have a big problem over here because of a small, a very small part. Our aircon doesn't work at all. While we do have gas inside the system and everything seems to be in a very good condition. This car has only 100,000 kilometers on the clock and it is very uh, common problem among any Mercedes-Benz after year 2000 to 2020 to have this issue. It's important to know the problems uh, when it comes to the HVAC and air conditioning of your car, even though you're not going to touch it or fix it. You really need to know, otherwise you might end up paying a lot of money and wasting a lot of money on a small part like this. So outside temperature is 24 degrees and when I turn on the aircon, coolest setting possible and then get no cooling from the vents at all whatsoever. So let's hook up the gauges uh, to this Mercedes-Benz, it's a 2010. This is the low pressure and over here at the front, here there is the high pressure inlet. So here the ports are connected and the gauges are showing no difference on the high side and as well as the low side. No matter on what setting you put the aircon, this is not changing at all. So with the ignition on and engine off, you can see that the request to compressor is 0%. And the reason is of course because engine is not idling and the speed of the engine is zero. And now if we start the engine, like so, you'll see that the request to compressor grows gradually. So now the air con is on, it's all the way set to minimum temperature and request to compressor is 94% and you notice that in the beginning of starting the engine the request gradually increased to avoid abrupt operation and interruption of the engine. So that's a great thing. But now the request to compressor is 100%. First thing to check on your car is the AC module fuse. And on this car, it's number 12. So you need to make sure that number 12 fuse is uh, good and it's not blown. Let's go ahead and check this one. We know it should be good because the module is receiving all the signals and providing power and all the signals to the diagnostic tools as you noticed earlier. So in this case, fuse number 12, which is this one, 15 amp, is uh, powering up the control module over here, AC control module, and there is a lots of electronics behind this uh, controller, the aircon controller. So you need to make sure uh, this is working properly, mine has no issue at all, and the fuse is also good. Another point about uh, the electronics of the air conditioning. You will not have a relay if your compressor is a clutchless type. The control module directly powers up the solenoid on your air con compressor. You will have one a fuse but not a relay. Let's go and see what kind of voltage we get on the compressor. So it's 5 volts, 10 hertz, and you're looking at the chart at 10 volts. This is how the waveform should look like. This is a healthy control module and you won't be able to look at this with only a multimeter. It's not going to happen with a multimeter because a multimeter is too slow to uh, react to the voltage so you need a 
oscilloscope or a, something like this multimeter and now the aircon is off you can see the signal is completely gone so in this case we don't have any issue we know that uh, we get power to the compressor solenoid so that's not a problem we know that we have gas in the system and that switch over there which is a cutoff switch if the gas is low that won't let the compressor to be on but in this case we notice on the diagnostic tool that the request to the compressor is 100% so of course having a good diagnostic uh, tool will help you to find the problem and in this case the solenoid valve is faulty and needs to be replaced before we go ahead and do anything make sure you don't remove the sear clip on your solenoid valve before you remove the refrigerant from your system otherwise you will hurt yourself and your car and your aircon system and it's not going to be good for the environment either another very important point do not go ahead and try to apply 12 volts or 14 volts directly to your solenoid because your solenoid needs PWM and I will explain more in the next uh, couple of minutes by applying 12 volts to your solenoid you might end up damaging it so do not do it at all a PWM wave also known as a pulse width modulated wave is a type of digital signal that is used to control analog devices it's usually a wave between 0 and 3.3 or 5 volts and it is used to provide power to LEDs, analog devices and motor controls. The AC compressor solenoid valve or AC compressor control solenoid valve. It's a very important part and basically it acts like a clutch for a very old conventional compressor but this is not a clutch it can bypass all or some of the refrigerant from the compressor to the system and bypass it all by allowing only 10% of the gases to go to the evaporator or it can allow 100% to go to the evaporator so this very important uh, part is prone to go bad on many of the compressors on uh, Mercedes-Benz from 2000 so in short I think this is a great invention because this can save a lot of fuel by only letting 50% of the refrigerant go into the evaporator and reducing the load on compressor as well as the engine and heat dissipation problem will be reduced by this part because the conventional clutch compressors can only be on and off so in order to buy one of these solenoids and in order to buy the right one you need to uh, write down that model number which is in this case 7SU-U17C okay here is a very important point to mention you see that yellow dot on top of the sensor that means this requires a diode and it means that it has an inbuilt diode inside so there are two types diodeless which has no yellow uh, dot on it and, and those with diode with yellow dots on it so when buying these parts make sure you buy the correct part for your car both types will fit your compressor also the valve itself might be different so this is the original valve I have and this is the exact copy that has one diode in line with the electronic if you do not buy the correct control valve with the diode you might receive a fault code that the circuit is shorted or open So this is a culprit for most of the problems and today we are going to replace it. You need to know this can go bad when your aircon has enough gas to operate but it wouldn't work. This is M112 from 2004 and it's pretty much using the same compressor system. As you can see over here it's clutchless and it does have that solenoid over there. 
And this W124 engine, it has the conventional old clutch system that can only be on and off. But diagnosing this system can be much easier as you always can see the clutch and compressor in action. This one over here, there is no way for you to feel if the compressor is engaged using the solenoid or not. So let's go ahead recover all the gas inside the system safely but just need to mention that you need to consult with your HVAC specialist to do this job if you need to get rid of the gas inside the system that should be done properly it's also risky and dangerous to the environment and to yourself if done not properly. So now what we need to do is to recover the system to uh, pull out all of the gas inside the system to this empty tank which has vacuum inside. So now we have recovered all of the refrigerant as you can see and it's there is vacuum in the system completely and it's all gone into this recovery tank over here which we have around 90 psi of pressure. I have used an old portable aircon a small one to vacuum all of the gases inside that tank and I do also have a vacuum pump to vacuum all of the oxygens and gases from the system if necessary. So we are now dealing with that solenoid over there as you can see on the compressor itself. Let's remove the plug and there is a circlip around it we need to uh, pull that circlip out in order to be able to pull the solenoid out and replace it. So let's do this. Okay, as you can see, that's the circlip that we need to pull out first in order to remove the solenoid. And here's the circlip uh, I was talking about before that you need to pull it uh, out. If you do not have a circlip puller, uh, you can always grind one of your long noses just the way I did and this is working really well to pull the circlip out. Before putting back the new solenoid, make sure you lubricate all of these uh, seals. There are four seals on it so it can function properly and leak proof the system. Okay, and here is the new solenoid installed back in. We now need to make sure that the compressor and the system has enough oil to function properly. This is actually a good idea to use some of these dye type of oil in case this system is going to leak at any point in future, you will realize ASAP. Pushing back all of the uh, refrigerant into the system again, and I'm ready to test to see how the replacement of the solenoid will help fixing the issue on this Mercedes-Benz ML350. Needless to say that this can be applied to any Mercedes-Benz from 2000. They have mostly gone clutchless and this is the main issue, the typical issue with most of these cars and compressors. So there is no gas left in in the bottle anymore and it's now time to check the aircon to see if it works or not. Now looking at both fault codes I can see they are only stored and not current. Let's go ahead clear these two codes and so it's cleared. Let's turn the ignition on and off, ignition off few seconds ignition on and then F3 and then there is no fault code let's go ahead and start up the engine the way to the cool and all the way to the cool okay it's now going down in temperature which is great Hey guys, you can see that the problem is completely fixed. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing. I hope this video helped you to diagnose 
your AC issue. Have a great day. Bye. Go.